The structure of the leaving group plays a big role in determining the rates of these SN1 and SN2 reactions that we've been talking about. This is easy to understand. Take a look. For the SN2 reaction, a nucleophile reacts directly with substrate in a direct displacement reaction from the backside through a transition state where the leaving group bond is partially broken. The leaving group in general has a partial negative charge to form products. And for the SN1 reaction, the leaving group simply departs through a transition state where the leaving group bond is again partially broken, partial negative charge on the leaving group on its way to the carbon cation plus leaving group. So in both cases, the transition state of the rate determining step has a bond that is partially broken. And in both cases, the leaving group already has acquired negative charge. So when you think about what aspects of the leaving group would affect the rate of the reaction, as we look at the transition state structure in the rate determining step, it's easy to conclude there should be two things. One is the strength of the bond that we're breaking, and the other is the ability of that leaving group to accommodate negative charge, if in fact negative charge is being created, and it usually is. So those two factors lead to the following experimental facts. We can make a list of good leaving groups, that is the ones that we would use in chemistry, and because we saw it as something that's bonded to carbon, up above, I'm not going to show it with a negative charge, and that would be chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Water is a good leaving group. I'm writing this backwards because in each case, we're thinking about having a bond to carbon. And then the best of all leaving groups that we're going to talk about is something that's often written OTS, and I'll get back to that structure in a minute. Now let me write the structure of the product that we're forming in each case. To be careful here, I need to put a positive charge on this oxygen. This is positively charged when that oxygen is protonated. Now let's write the structure of the products that would be formed in each of these cases. This is chloride, bromide, iodide, water, neutral molecule, and this OTS minus, this mystery structure that I'll talk about soon. And we can say that this is good in terms of rate, better, much better, and best. Water fits into the better category with bromide. How do we explain that? Well, for the halides, we move from stronger bond to weaker. And we think about the bonds to carbon. And we move from smaller to larger. So we have a relatively small, for a halide, atom that's accommodating negative charge, a bigger atom that's spreading out the negative charge more, and an even bigger atom that's spreading out the charge even more as we move from chloride to bromide to iodide. So the bond strength is obviously a factor that we can understand, and so is the ability to accommodate charge. The ability to accommodate the charge, this partial charge on the leaving group in the transition state, is correlated with how big it is. The bigger volume the ion has to spread out negative charge, the more stable that negative charge is. This guy is a stable neutral molecule, and it makes a lot of sense that it would be easy to lose. And this guy has remarkable resonance stabilization. Take a look at this structure and the resonance stabilization. This negative OTS is a six-membered ring with alternating single double bond and a methyl group there. And I'm going to call this C7H7. And we have two other resonance structures for this as we picture a pair of electrons making that double bond and a pair of these pi electrons going up above. And then to form the third resonance structure, those pair of pi electrons swinging down there and these swinging up here. So here's the negative charge in this resonance structure. And I put resonance structures in brackets to remind us that none of them are real, but they all help give us a picture of what the hybrid looks like. 
And the key thing is that in each case, the negative charge is on an oxygen atom that easily accommodates it. So all three of these resonance structures contribute strongly to a much more stable anion than we would have without the resonance stabilization. And that's why OTS is such a good leaving group. So to summarize, when we think about leaving groups in SN1 and SN2 reactions, we look directly at the transition state structure to determine the factors that affect its stability, its ease of formation, and those two factors with respect to the leaving group are how strong the bond is to the leaving group and carbon, and the development of partial negative charge and how readily that negative charge is stabilized, which explains the order we have observed down here where all of these five leaving groups are reasonable leaving groups for SN1 and SN2 reactions. Their relative rates depend on the bond strengths and how readily these guys accommodate negative charge.